Recording is in progress, and now we're all ready to go. And now all I got to do is start bringing in some of the people here that are on our uh, on our pop up show. Uh, this is, of course, as I say, my favorite show. I love this show. Uh, and uh, uh, let me see here. We got oh, hey, Shaggy, how are you, Shaggy? Yeah, no complaints. And no complaints. Uh, Charlene, how you doing today? Doing really good. You're doing really good. Brian Neary, nice to see you. Edward right, Berger. Man. That's right. Okay. And uh, Len LaFrisco. Charlie Wallace, you're smiling at Edward Berger's voice. Yes, I am. <laughs> and uh, Paul Levin. And I'm still waiting for uh, Paula 12 to show up here. Uh <laughs> Oh, um, I'm waiting for Mark. Oh, here. Oh, she's here. Okay. Admit all and Andrew Deutsch. Okay. So two more here. Here we go. There we so, go. So Charlie, how is your weather now? It's like 83 degrees here now. Sunny. Oh my God. How, it's how much? 83 right now. Oh boy. Well, got the air conditioner on. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. No, there's no, there's no such thing as global warming, right? No. <laughs> right, it's no problem. Hello, Andrew. I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Good to see you again. You too. First yeah. opportunity I've had to get back out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, what? It's uh, it's Monday. How are you, Al? This is oh, a, it's President's Day. It's President. Yes, yeah. yeah, President's Day. Did you? Hear, <laughs> Huh? What does Charlie's T-shirt say at the end of it? Does it say uh, the same as my age? Oh. That's what I'm weird being the same age as old people. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to say at the, the same temperature. Tell me about it. You know, I wish I wish I could all roll it back. You know, or I'd like to roll it back, but have all the wisdom I have now. Yeah. You know. That would be nice, but what the hell? So that's all I've got to say. See you later. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> gee, we lot of lost a lot of people this week, didn't we? Yeah. This was one of those, they die in threes, uh, uh, you know. Well, they die in more than threes lately, but, well, you know, whatever. Let's see. We, we lost, uh, who do we, we lost? Well, Stella Stella Stevens, Stevens, Raquel Welch, Belzer. Richard Belzer, yeah, I was surprised yeah. to hear that from you yesterday when I called you. I didn't know he had died. He had died at his. But he home. was almost eighty. I mean, I'm not saying that's a good thing. But he died yeah. at his home in France. In France, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, he had moved to France. If that that if in fact he had a home there, I would imagine that you know. Uh, did, did you know he was Henry Winkler's first cousin? No, I didn't. Oh. No. Yeah, he was. I didn't know that until I read the obits, you know. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. Son of a bitch. Well, that's 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 interesting. Uh, Belzer, I remember Belzer the most for one thing, more than any other. He was one of a small group of comedians who somehow had committed the entire script of The Godfather to memory. Mm. He, you could tell him to pick up at any point during the uh, during the Godfather, and he could pick it up at that point. Did you have him on your show at some point? Years and years and years ago. I thought so. In, in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, I, he, I, we, we always liked him. He was a he was a good comic. He was a nice guy. You know, but he's dead now. <laughs> Are you talking about Belzer? Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, Alex, were you there when Hulk Hogan choked Belzer out? No. Why would I be there? Well, in the city, in New York, like when it happened. No, I don't think so. You might no. be back in San Fran at that time. Uh, I think I left actually before I think, uh, was that, where, 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 where did he choke him and where did he choke him? Uh, it would have been like 84 and uh, he, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T were promoting WrestleMania. Uh -huh. And uh, Belzer was uh, interview interviewing him. He had a talk show at that. Oh, point. you're you're right. He did have a talk show, didn't? Yeah. He? And he he 
told Hulk Hogan that wrestling was fake. And back then they got real touchy about that. And so Hogan put him in a chokehold and he choked him out. I, I remember he passed out. And then he sued the WWF at the time and got himself like a mansion in France and called it Shea Hogan. I'm not making <laughs> That's how he got the place in France? Yeah, I'm not making this up. That's funny. So he well, died. Did you died. read that Vince McMahon wants to sell the WWE or whatever it's called these days? Nine billion dollars. I think Universal is going to buy it. I think they danced since the '80s for Saturday Night's main event. I think NBC Universal is going to buy the WWE. I don't think so. No. No. They I think NBC the has enough trouble with some of the things he, they have now, like Peacock. That they really don't want to get into something else like that. All right. Well, maybe a lot, of these, a lot of these companies are becoming very, uh, very skittish about doing anything. I mean, Paramount Plus has problems. HBO Max has problems. Uh, 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 who else has problems? Disney has problems. Disney has problems. Disney Plus. I mean, and and here's the here's the thing that gets me. Okay, Disney Plus. How many subscribers? Millions and millions. Now, now they're they're losing money. Okay, so how many to lose money? What would you say you'd have to have as your subscription number? Certainly not sixty five million. <laughs> how the hell are you losing money on sixty five million? Because people that forget to cancel. <clears throat> what? People forget to cancel their subscription to Disney Plus or whatever. Yeah, well, that may be, but what I'm saying is it doesn't matter whether they forget or not. That's money coming in. You've yeah. got 65 million subscriptions. Okay. Uh, places, Question. What? Is it like the movie business? Like, you know how movies on paper like to show that they have as much losses as they can? There's movie math, they call it. Is there something where all this money is no. just going into production? They're feeding themselves. No, I'll tell you why. No, in in that okay. case, they just what they would do is they always shared points with other people. So on the books, they wanted to show that they didn't make a profit, so they didn't have to share the profits with other people. Yes. In this case, you've got somebody like Disney who's on the stock exchange, and when it turns out that they're losing money off Disney Plus, their stock price goes down. Right. So they don't want to cook the books on that. I got. Gotcha. I heard those okay. those seven dwarfs are just drinking all the profits. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but when and George they were in... Walt died 50, 60 years ago, he didn't wasn't around for all this. Did he die that wow. long ago? God, really? five sixty six. Wow. 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 Um, Huge anti-Semitic. Yeah. Well. Oh, he's not a nice person. But He's not a nice person. You want to say. I, I, anti-Semitic is a question. I, I still question whether he was truly anti-Semitic or just simply. Why? Because he hired some Jews, Alex? <laughs> Actually, he hired a Jewish communist to write Song of the South. Uh, he, uh, he was, he, he was, he, he, he was, this, he, he, he was strange. He, you know, he grew up at a time in a place where. Am I right, Shecky? You didn't have the right feelings about things, you know. No, he grew up what, was it Kansas City or somewhere in Kansas or whatever, you know. Probably never met a Jew in his life till he moved to Hollywood, you know. No. And uh, you know, it, it, it's it, it's ter it's uh, terrible, of course, you know. But at least he's no it was no Kanye, you know. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, apparently, and I look obviously, I never knew him. Apparently, it was a decent person. Who? Disney. This, he was a decent person? I think so. Yeah. But what, didn't you just say he was supposed to be a horrible person? Well, maybe I said that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Shetty. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, every time I see Disney, you know, when I was growing up as a kid. Well, it would be the wonderful world of Walt Disney. Oh, no, TV show. that wasn't even on, but I mean, every every motion picture my parents took me to was a Disney movie, you know, and I didn't realize how I was being indoctrinated into his world, you know, because there were certain 
uh, moralities that existed in his picture. Spear, we huh? call it. In huh? his spear, we call it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like for instance, I always felt in later years that it was by no coincidence that the witch in Snow White had a big hook nose and was made to look very Jewish. Yeah. You know, if you were to draw a Jewish cartoon of a Jewish person and you were kind of racist, how would you draw it? Like the witch. Not not the not the pretty part of the witch, the the ugly part of the witch. You might you mean like the the uh, uh the, the person who was uh, the witch the wicked witch of the wizard of oz like no no family? no i'm talking about no the no no that was oh, no I'm, what I'm just saying is that the stereotype because oh well, that's another Margaret, one whatever her name was that's another one was that did they add that nose to uh what's her name oh, yeah I that's margaret so. hamilton I'm and actually so. i just recently saw some pictures gail sondergaard was originally supposed to be the witch and she turned it down Oh, okay. And here's the funny. She was too pretty. Let's call it too pretty. Oh. How old do you think? Um, what was her name? Um, uh, Margaret Hamilton. Margaret Hamilton was when she made The Wizard of Oz. Not that old, I don't think. Probably in her late twenties, early thirties. She, wow. she was twenty-nine. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Here's the one I really love: North by Northwest. Right, yeah. we all love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cary Grant's mother was younger. Cary than Grant's you. mother. Cary Grant's mother, the woman who plays mother, was a year Jesse younger Royce, than he Matt, was. Jesse Royce. Matt, Mil Jesse Mil Royce Mil Landis. Yeah. Landis. Yeah. <laughs> and I often wondered how she felt about that. And I figured she felt pretty good because she was getting a paycheck. Yeah, that's right. That's what actors and actresses do. You know, yeah. whatever you want to say. But, you know, you were supposed to believe that that Cary Grant, you know, was that young, that he could get a uh, that a woman that young could be attracted to him. You know, but he was still pretty. It was still was Cary Grant, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, was Cary Grant gay? Yes. No. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, he says it like he's got blown by him or something. Randy Scott. Huh? Well, Randall Randall Scott. Scott. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they were they and were I, frankly again, I don't care. They were roommates and they were best friends, Shecky. Yeah. Yes, they had a house in Malibu or wherever the hell. You it ever was. see pictures yeah. of them living at their house in Malibu? It looks like an absolute drop dead. Gay couple, okay. And who cares? They're sitting there At with their little. Me, they're si they're sitting there petting their dog, you know, uh, uh, in their swimming suits uh, on the uh, on the uh, what do you call it? on the uh, diving, board. diving board of their home. It, it just it, it, the pictures were just all too much talent. There was a guy named Kenneth Anger, who was a movie. Oh, well, that movie. that book is one hundred and ten percent BS. Really, Hollywood Babylon. Oh. Absolutely. How was it BS? You didn't. You wouldn't argue with the pictures he was showing of of Cary Grant and. Uh, and well, he found a picture. Ah. You know, hmm? he found a picture. He didn't say they were gay. He just showed those pictures, and you walked away with the impression that he was gay. But you know, and again, I don't want to. To me, most of Hollywood actors and actresses were gay, or bisexual. Did Hollywood make them that way? Andrew, no, because they were actors and actresses yeah. and to be playing. Like, for instance, Barbara Stanwyck, very gay. Oh, I always thought she was a dyke, even when I didn't know what dykes were. By the way, I can call them dykes because lesbians have told me officially I can use the term dyke. You know, and Barbara Samwick apparently was a lovely woman, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know. Yeah. Um, and she was married to a, um, was it Joel McRae or I can't remember. Right really? Now. She was married to someone for like 30 years. Okay, so was that just a beard, or did yeah, they have, did yeah. they have kids? Did they have any kids at all, or I don't think so. Yeah. 
Because in those but a days, lot of those actresses, Kay Francis, et cetera, you know, again, I'm doing my et cetera at the moment. They were gay women. Okay. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. No, no big deal. Um, uh, but I mean, I, I, I but I just, uh, I just, it, it, it almost seems to me when I look at the history of Hollywood, it, 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 Hollywood was full of two things, Jews and gays. Yeah, but isn't Broadway the same way? If you're a Broadway performer, many of them are gay. I would say a great deal of them. You know, yeah. it, used to, it used to be strange. I, I got told, this, my, my father told me this, that um, the usually the chorus lines in all the shows were gay. People were gay. Yeah. And they people who went out on the road with the road shows were gay. Now, the question is why they hired gays for the job. And it was because they didn't want them fooling around with the chorus girls. <laughs> they didn't want yeah, them but most of the cor chorus girls were prostitutes. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? What really? You have to oh, realize no, Jackie no, has a that, Jackie has a wide definition of prostitutes. <laughs> I think you all have a wide definition him, of categories. To him, yeah. to him, Meghan Markle is a prostitute. Now, I don't know that that's exactly true. I mean, what what point do you have to become a prostitute and are you defined as a prostitute i don't think she's taking maybe money from prince harry or whatever his name is this week i like but, her Jackie, so don't talk about her <laughs> i think we've got the makers of a game show here Did everybody see the south park by the way yes I oh my fun. god <laughs> oh my god you know it is it is said she is very hurt by that it was on of everything. Every, <laughs> everything it said was everywhere sure. the following day. It was on Instagram. To Facebook, me, Facebook. to me, that's something you don't get upset over. You know, that's a cartoon. They make fun of everybody. What makes you so special? They're not going to make fun of you. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but we uh, we enjoyed it. And, yeah. and the the new uh, Last of Us. Did you see the the episode? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. But, okay, well, I won't spoil it, but all I'm going to say is the guys watched this show. What? They watched this show. The guys who produce that watch your show at night. How do you oh, know? Wow. Okay, so because this is not a spoiler, but yeah. remember when they're on the horse mm -hmm. and they're talking, What what is he trying to describe to her? Football. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They watch this oh, show because he was trying to explain football to her, and he knows how you keep bringing this up this last few weeks. No, it's funny. As I was <laughs> watching it, as I was watching it, I was going. Right, Charlie? No. no yeah, right. I, you know, I, right? Yes. As I was watching it and him saying all that, it was the first time in my life I began to start understanding <laughs> football. He explained it. Alex understood. They start talking about explaining to... football, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. We've been going through this three weeks with Alex. Jeez. Yeah. I was listening to Mark Murren's podcast, and he mentioned the Alex Bennett show. Really? The Alex Bennett is talking nostalgically about you. The talking he what? He, he was talking nostalgically about uh, when Alex Bennett was on. Jeez. I'm not sure exactly what era. I don't know how to take that because I can't stand Mark <laughs> Maron. Stand you know. Oh, Mark Maron. Uh, Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah, why? Because Mark Maron's a big jerk. He used, he used to be much worse than he is now. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he was such a jerk that Sam Kinison uh, hated him so much that uh, uh, Maron was staying in the comedy store uh, hall, house and up it, on the hill. And it, so to speak. Well, it was a house on the hill they had where they would put up the yeah, comedy. The motel or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. And Mark Maron was staying there, and Kinnison went up and peed in his bed. <laughs> there was a rift between him and uh, John Stewart. Also, John Stewart wouldn't have him on the Daily Show, and yeah. he Mark Maron tried to apologize because he was finally sober. And Stewart said, "Sometimes someone crosses the line that you can't, can't go back over." I'm and dead. you know, my 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 newswoman Lori Thompson, who a lot of you know of, hated him, just yeah. hated him. 
I can't remember. They actually got into a fight on the air or something one day. She just said, there isn't anybody in Hollywood you haven't used yet, right? <laughs> you know, uh, she hated him. She she couldn't stand him. And I I never had any great love for him myself. Didn't, didn't he play a role in the in the that uh, series about women wrestlers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yes, he did. I, he was really good at that. I don't know about yeah, he was not a nice person in that role. Right. <laughs> when you're really, acting, you play can really act. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a nice person. Yeah, he played a, a miserable guy in that in that show. Yeah. He was playing himself. Yeah. He was not a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I I I could care less about it, but he did mention me, so I have to now love him, right? <laughs> no. no, you don't. No. When was that? When no. was that podcast? I can't remember who he was interviewing, but it was I was driving six hours back to work and happened to have Recent, it on. Recently? Yeah. Um, yeah. He's been working recently. He's got a podcast that's hundreds of guests. I mean, it's wow. He's done very well, but yeah, I don't think he's doing it as much as he used to. He got it's, to get him where he constant. is. His, his podcast isn't it isn't big in comparison to what it was because other people have taken over that niche, like Rogan, and so yeah, on. It's it's the what the WTF podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was one of the early people doing podcasts. I have to give him credit for that. But that was only because nobody wanted to hire him to do comedy. <laughs> it's amazing. You can fail upward. By the way, Shecky, did you watch the BAFTAs? No. Oh, we, watched we watched them. We watched them. them. Yeah. Uh, the BAFTAs were on. That's the English Academy Awards. Winner for Best Picture was... I think it was All Quiet, wasn't it? All Quiet on the yeah. Western Front, yeah. Best Actor. It really gets me. Went to the guy yeah. who played Elvis. <sighs> and I have a yeah. thing up on my Facebook page yeah. today that basically just says, you know... Why we shouldn't give Academy Awards to people because they did a good impression of somebody? Yeah, but I also that's, maybe I saw this where people were attacking you that that's acting. Okay. No, I I didn't even look at the replies, but it is no, it isn't acting. It's you know I mean this it, it by that by that notion a rich a little should like have won seven Academy Awards, yeah. you know. I mean, I, I just don't think it, when I see people doing impressions of people, you know, I go, you know, I mean, and look at the people who win Academy Awards. I mean, one year, four years in a row, all two top categories were won by people doing impressions, wow. you know? So if you want to win an Academy Award, do an impression. I mean, come on, tell me, there weren't better jobs of acting than the guy who played Elvis in what is a terrible movie? the worst out of all of them there were so many good ones yeah i mean you had people like brendan uh, not brendan gleason but uh, uh Frazier. 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 Brendan. brendan Frazier, or even uh, uh who is it clive owen is it who who was in clive uh, owen died alex no. what clive owen didn't die who am i thinking of though that was in uh, uh banshee the banshees of energy it's whatever Insurance. yeah colin colin farrell Colin Farrell. Colin he Farrell. was he was he was nominated. I mean, you can tell me that his job of acting wasn't better than this guy doing Elvis. Well, you know what it was, Alex. Both of those guys were nominated. Well, Brendan Gleeson was nominated, but for best supporting actor. Oh. And I don't even know how that one comes about. I mean, Brendan Gleeson was equally on a par with. Clive Owen in that picture. Yeah, but Owen. he then puts himself into the supporting category, knowing he ain't going to get the best right. actor. You know, win. Take a chance. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was that good in that film. He was great. It yeah. was a great film. And he lost out to the guy who played the kid in that picture. Yeah. yeah. You know, I said to you yesterday, we were talking on the phone, that everything else but whatever... Is a dreadful movie. Sorry. What movie? Which, Elvis. Yeah, Kung Fu, you know, that uh, everything else, but whatever. The one that got oh, that movie. Not, everything not, and not. everywhere all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Not very good. I didn't like it. I don't know. I'm going to go back and re look at it. I didn't like it either. I'm going to go back and re look at it. I think it may be better. You have to go back and re look at it. 
how good was it? Well, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you because <laughs> I have to watch it the next day with you because I watch it the night it broadcasts. Uh, uh, the Last of Us, I enjoy almost as more on the second viewing than on the first one. And primarily it's because I played the game, so I know every inch of that game. So now I'm comparing everything they're doing to the game. What are you, what are you doing? What? <laughs> the violin for you alex why <laughs> i wasn't talking about my health come on anyway uh what was i what was i saying oh so i mean so i look at it and the first time i watch it i go oh, i remember that scene oh what did they change this they change that you know whatever second time around i just sit back and watch it with her and enjoy it you know and i but why you compare it to the game you well, he can't. played the game twice. Okay. okay. The, the game has is so plotted and has so much plot to it that you can't help but compare it. It's like reading a book and then saying, oh, well, it's this a little different from the book. Well, that's like movies when, you know, you've adapted a book into yeah. a movie. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But I mean, the changes they're making, I can't complain about because they're making fairly good decisions, you know. Yeah. But behind the scenes, they talk about how how re, how uh, how much they copied or sort of replayed that in the. In well, the there's game, a right? scene in this week's episode that is right. directly, and I and I I knew they were going to do that scene because it's such a good scene in the game, uh, oh. in which she starts talking with him about you know she hasn't had a childhood and people have died. Yeah, don't say anything. I won't say that much, but and then they all die. And it's a great, it's a, it's a great little scene, and in the game, it doesn't play out as a game. It plays out as what they call a cut scene, is, oh. and it goes on for maybe ten minutes or whatever. <laughs> stop it! No, I stop it. She doesn't want to like it because yeah. I do. I yeah, uh, I'm. I'm oh, I said as, to you, I, I, I really like, like it. I really like done. it. I can watch put all nine episodes. You know, on a. I think you like it, Jackie. I really do. I I, I know you. I'm and, not saying I think anything you'll enjoy against it. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm you're watching, watching it because it's something we can watch together. Well, let's talk to another it doesn't old. Doesn't mean older, that I love it. An older fart like you, Vernon Nunn. You you're watching it, right? I haven't watched the latest episode, but. Uh, one thing I found confusing was the episode where the <clears throat> the um, uh, the guy that that he was I forget what they call each other the the prepare, preppers he he is oh, oh, oh the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, yeah the the guys who were preparing for the uh, you know the right, apocalypse but he, he fenced off his entire town and he was the only guy left in the town and this guy shows up and they end up falling in love. And and you're led to believe that they subsisted on gourmet meals for ten years, and I'm thinking, how the heck do you do that? <laughs> well, one of them was a good cook. Yeah, and they, they were, were growing, growing their own food. food. And they were growing their own food. They were growing their own food, and they for had the regular. They grew yes. their own oh, food. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they yeah. he, because like, would, he, some, would somebody explain the premise to me? Are they on some kind of planet or something? No. This is Earth. Earth. What's the premise of the show? The premise of the show is, is that the Earth has been pretty much ravaged by a fungus. Oh, it's like, like a dystopian thing? Yes, the, it's been ravaged like by a pandemic. Yeah. Except and, a fungus. And, and everything is kind of like overgrown with weeds and everything, you know, like that. And uh, this guy uh, who lost his daughter at the beginning of this whole onslaught, uh, who died 20 years earlier. He's been just living with that in his whole life. And now he is asked by a bunch of people, they're going to pay him uh, to take this little girl, this young girl, across the country and take her to a certain group of people. Who are, she's who, immune from the fungus. And it turns out she's immune from the fungus. And that her, the immunity is in her body. Her body. So he tra it's about them traveling across the country and how he becomes closer and he hates, he hates her in the beginning. He doesn't want anything to do with her because he lost his daughter. You know, he will only have one daughter and he doesn't want another one. And slowly but surely he's he becomes he gets more protective of this girl. And he and, has like adventures along the way with her. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And but but I think the whole thing about it is 
is the fact that he um you know that he 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 doesn't want to be in love with her he doesn't want to feel affection for her as a father and slowly but surely it's kind of starting to happen you know uh and he's very protected by the end of, in the game he's very protective of her in fact he saves her life so uh, you know but i won't tell you how that ends but it's you know it, i think they left out the now, part paul that the fungus makes people into zombies they need each other yeah. well they no, no they don't no, no, no. that detail oh, no, okay. they don't eat each other to begin with they're not zombies they have a fungus no. Okay. There's a violent. fungus among us. And that makes it, it, it overtakes their body and controls them. Okay. But they, they don't go violent. around eating people. There are cannibals in this society. There are human beings, well, like, cannibals. They have you haven't uh, well, seen what, them. What is this fascination with zombies? I am I have no well, idea. I have no but, idea. Well, I, it, it, there's it, no, it, yeah, there's okay. very few zombies in this movie. It's not like uh, or the show, yeah. it's not like the zombies you see where they're all being attacked every second. This yeah, is very, no, they they have uh, pretty much uh they had one basic zombie onslaught in this thing. <laughs> And that was it. They have had very few zombies in the entire show. Marjorie even has to admit to that, you know. So it's a, it's a serious drama show. It's not like a horror movie. Right? Oh, it's a, it's, a well, movie. It, it's a serious drama in a dystopian society, which has certain horrors associated with it. You know, <laughs> oh, that's, but, that's our country. At the moment. That's our country at the present yeah. time. No, the thing <laughs> is that what they what they did is uh, they the game itself was exceptional. And the reason it was exceptional is that as you play the game, the plot also goes forward, even sometimes while you're fighting. Oh, oh, I, okay, I get it now. Okay. okay. So the, the, there's there's even a plot while you keep going forward and going to, into these action sequences. The people are talking to each other. They're saying stuff, you know? Well, that yeah, was sounds this, like was a this... universal serial for the 40s. Yeah. yeah. It, was this originally a, uh, a video game that was yeah. transposed? Okay. Yes. And it was called The Last of Us. And everybody, and I played when I first played, I, when I first really got into it, it was only about a year ago when I got a newer copy of it. They came out with, they redid the whole game to make it look better. And, um, and I played the thing through twice because I liked the plot so much, you know? And um, I, I, I it, what it is, is the guy who did it, uh, this Neil Druckmann, created a movie and then threw a game in the middle of it okay so you you have an investment in these characters as you're playing them well, it's a story within a story thing it's not even a story within a story it is a story it's a linear story okay you know but it it has certain portions which you have to get through certain areas and kill off some of these zombies and kill off some of these cannibals and kill off some of these uh the human beings are the most fearsome in the whole in the whole thing mm -hmm. the zombies simply get in the way yeah yeah you know? and i don't call them zombies because uh, the uh, the producers and the creators of the thing don't want to call them zombies they're they're the fungus people you know people a zombie infected. is somebody that's dead that comes back to life Oddly, oddly enough, in real life, there is such a thing as that kind of fungus called cordyceps. Yes. And they infect, they're basically bit what they do is they infect ants and insects Insect. and take over their brains. Yep. And then, you know, live within that. So so Marjorie does not like the show. Is that is that right, Marjorie? Yeah. I'm watching it with Alex. It's something we can do together. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so much. Oh, man. The, the Look, you don't have to, uh, I'll, 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 I'll say it here. You don't have to watch anymore. No, I, I watch say, it. I say, say, it. say, <laughs> she, she uses me as the excuse to get this guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. That's what it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I like I mean, what I've seen so far. So I plan on watching the episodes to get caught up. Well, what's it's great about movie. The, the, it's trick of the, hat, movie. the trick of the hat here is to um, have a show that Vernon Nunn can enjoy not ever having played the game. 
Yeah, yeah, I enjoy it immensely. I never played the game. Yeah. No, and I will yeah. never play the game. And as I've said to you, once it's over, I'll watch all nine or ten episodes. Yeah, nine episodes. And then next year, they've been renewed. They, oh. it's, they, there was a sequel to the game. There was a second. Right, they go back from California to you. To no, York, no, right? no, no. It's in a completely different story. As a matter of fact, in the in the second sh- uh, 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 game, the little girl grows up. She's five years older. That's why I think they got this actress anyway, because she is five years older than the than the character she's playing. And this will allow her to move into that next series. But in that next series, she becomes the bad person. You know, she becomes kind of the evil one. It's it's very you know they they've done some very interesting stuff with this. Did she marry someone named Harry? Married somebody <laughs> named Harry. And 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 she's a little whore. Okay, all right. Well, of course, what I find interesting is the the one of the premises they have is it's every man for themselves, and you know some people band together under a strong leader almost like the autocracy that we see going on in our country now. Yeah, yeah, there's that, you know. Um, I don't know that I can say that in the game there was any political undertones. Uh, you know, it was it, it was just the basic story of the girl and the guy and the relationship that develops between them. And she's got a potty mouth even in the, uh, even in the <laughs> game, you know. I think one of the reasons they hired a 20-year-old, I think she's 20 or 21, to play the role is because I think they would have gotten a lot of heat if they had had a 14-year-old saying all these yeah. horrible words. I mean, every other word out of her mouth is fuck, you know? Yes, how dare you have a 14-year-old talk like yeah. Well, no, it's, it's, it's okay to have a 14-year-old talk that way. It's not okay to give her a script to read and she talks that way, okay? <laughs> I mean, does that make sense? No. Yes. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. But anyway, I watched Devotion over the weekend, and I enjoyed that movie. Immensely. That's about black pilots or something. Yeah. He's you a fighter pilot, and he he teams up with another pilot. They become best friends. They end up going over to Korea, and he gets shot down. And so his his uh, white friend crashes his own plane to try to save him because he's he's trapped in the wreckage. And he ends up he ends up not being able to get him out, so they rescue the, the the pilot who tried to save his friend. And when he got back, he has all this remorse. And his wife said, "You know, you were there to watch his back. You weren't there to save him, and you did that." Yeah, yeah. What what was it we watched that we really liked? Oh yeah, Empire of the Light, film with Olivia Coleman about a movie theater. And it's a kind of uh, Sam Mendes's ode to movies. Yes. But in a very, very unique and very warm way. You know, there's this projectionist played by uh, Toby. What's his name? What's his last name? Toby. Uh, no, he's British. Upper right. Or no, no, whatever. no. I, McGuire, anyway. I don't know. No, not Toby McGuire. Um, but anyway, he, upper, I, I can't, I don't I'm trying to remember his name. I'll, I'll remember it in a second. I'm, I'm very bad these days with that. And, uh, it was, um, uh, really a, a very, uh, he, the, he's the projectionist in the theater and he gives some, st- just says some things about what it's like to be a projectionist and what it's like for that light to come out of that projector and go onto a screen and affect a whole bunch of people in a theater. And it's, but it's not just that. It's about Olivia Coleman, who is a bit crazy, who works at this theater. And, it's great. And it's just, it's a great, it's a very good movie. I, I didn't want to watch it because I figured, ah, it's going to be dull. And No, it wasn't dull at all. It's really a great film. Yeah, Coleman. where is that playing online? Uh, it's playing on, uh, it's playing, I believe, HBO Max. Isn't that oh, what okay. we watched it, Marjorie? I think it was HBO. I thought it was a SAG thing. No, 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 no. No. It was it was on uh, it was on HBO Max, I think. Uh, Jim Jim Jeffries has a new comedy special that ought to get Gen Z trying to call for his death. It's quite what? it's kind of funny. What's Jim it? Jeffries, the Australian comedian? Yeah, yeah. It, it, like in the old days, crosses every freaking line you possibly can with the supposed woke. Wow. It's, 
So it's, why it's, I can't believe that they actually aired it. Just what is that hap- what is happening at Mike Chisholm's house? <laughs> Yeah. We, we're not yeah. seeing Mike, but we're seeing people walk through the room. I mean, has he been, really? Yeah, a bunch of different people. Yeah, yeah. Is he is he being like? There's Mike. Oh, there's Mike. <laughs> for four minutes. Four, four minutes. Minute warning. He's going to come back with something brilliant. And there he goes. He's gone again. There he goes. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna hear about Letterman in a second here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're um, knocking on the door. Yeah. But uh, you know, and as you know, I worked there for 35 years. This guy has more interest in Dave than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's well, got I, more would, I, would, I don't think that's unusual. I think that if I worked for Dave for that long, I wouldn't particularly have that much interest in him either. You know, no, I had dinner with his assistant last week, and you know, great girl, mm-hmm. you know, was my former intern, and fine. Yeah, it, it just she has up kind of the same thing where she just rolls her eyes. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, you guys work with him and had to care about him every day. That was and your he's job. A good guy. I will never say anything bad about him. But it's not someone that we're, you know. Do you remember when Matt Rushmore? Do you remember say. when Dave copped a, an attitude about me? Oh, back at 82. It went at NBC. Yeah, and he sent a guard to check if I was okay. What? Because because that guy from cable TV was there or something like that? Well, you had said something about him on your channel C show or whatever on cable, and you were in my office, and Dave walked by, and is also like, "Is Rick okay?" Oh. <laughs> and he literally sent a guy to check because Alex Bennett was in my office. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was he your is- job, Rick? What? What was your job? Now tell me your name. The name of your job because it's so unimpressive. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Never changed because I didn't want it to change. It was called film coordinator. Even though as the years went on, I had no projector in my office, which I did at one point and things like that. So I was more or less, let's call it a semi-producer by the end. But I never changed the title or went to someone and said, oh, give me a producer title because I couldn't have cared less. And when the show went off, as most of you might know, I didn't work again. And you know why? Because you had to put film producer down on your CV. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, there was one point, I can't remember, Rob Burnett called me into his office and said, you know, you've maxed that on salary. We're never giving you a raise again, but you're never going to be fired. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, so it's, it's like you were responsible for everything to make the show happen. In other words, I would come in in the morning and they would say, you're doing this. And it's like, okay. Yeah. He, or he, I always joke that, you know, I was in the tape room a lot and the scripts would come down for things that are going to be on the sh- supposedly on the show. And I just look at them and go, this ain't going to be on television. <laughs> <laughs> And then I would, you know, and then I go to work and prepare them to not be on television. One guy who was being interviewed on YouTube about the Letterman show referred to you as that whenever they needed something, they would call it checky film. No, checky footage. Checky footage? I think he said film. Okay. Yeah, he said, and I figured... Oh yeah, okay. So any any footage that you would run that was you didn't have to pay for. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I mean it was paid for. <laughs> well, let's not even get into that one. But you know, and Dave loved to use me in these stupid on camera things because I couldn't act to save my life. Well, he he liked people like you. I mean, you know, that's why I played Elvis for like five years. I mean, I hate to say this, but you were on an acting 
par with Calvert DeForest. <laughs> and I admit it. Yeah, there's one time, I don't know if you know, remember the black linebacker on the Giants, Lawrence Taylor. One time I played him. It was a phone call. It's like, hi, Dave, it's Lawrence Taylor from the Giants. Like, okay. Yeah. But you were most well, I thought it was him. You were most most famous. <laughs> you were most famous for your Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, where um and you were a, you, you were a better Elvis, Elvis than the guy that played him in the movie. <laughs> oh gee. Are those are two different people, Alex. Huh? Are those they're two different people. I thought that was Rick. Uh, oh, no, that wasn't Rick. That uh, Can you show us your bath after Rick? <laughs> they never show even this, called him when they were making the movie. Okay. <laughs> no, um, again, what you know, the Elvis estate came after Letterman because Rick is doing such a good impression of Elvis. <sighs> we're going to sue you. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah that. <laughs> well, you, you did have a, a, when they made you up, put the wig on you and all that. And then I found out later, there was the same wig Calvert used when he was playing Roy Orbison. <laughs> <laughs> it, was the, it was the Memphis wig. Yeah. yeah, you know, but, you know, it's like, again, I, you know, you come in and they say, uh, do you want to do, you're doing this By the way, today. By the way like, speaking of Elvis, it. speaking of Elvis, Rick and I both oh we went to we went to we we coming across the country we drove across the country together because i had to come back here to go to work uh, for my friend editing video at his uh at his company and um he and i traveled across the country and we decided well you know let's go to memphis so we stopped in memphis and we went to graceland like the paul simon song yeah which is really the tacky. creepy. Yeah, what? I was there. Do you say creepy? Well, remember the um, ceiling was carpeted. Yeah, and right across the street was a souvenir shop. Yeah, and and so anyway, um, uh, but then we went to Sun Records, and we love that. Oh, that was great. So if you're ever in in Memphis, forget about Graceland. I mean, it's just you just you want to see the, the, the jungle room. I mean, it's really tacky. Really, and they have a on YouTube. There's a one hour and five minute collection. Shecky as Elvis collection on Letterman, eighty six to eighty eight. <laughs> I watched that, by the way, a couple weeks ago. Oh, you wasted a lot of your life. A year, <laughs> an hour. I cannot get back in my life ever. I uh, oh yeah okay. What, what you no, know? I still know. remember we what? did the show. I don't know if anyone remembers. We did a show at Kennedy Airport, and I'm in the Elvis costume at the buffet. You know? oh, now, wait a minute. I got a question here. Hold on a second. I mean, oh, I was going to say Mike Chisholm was trying to hog the citizen panel here by being on two streams at the same time. <laughs> Where is he? There he is. Oh, he, there he is. He, well, he's changed cameras is what he's done. Yeah, Apparently, man, let's go to the set. You guys are talking Letterman. I can't believe it. Mike's Mike Terminator showed up today. <laughs> but again, I, and I always do this every week. I watch uh, Felicia Collins part two that Chisholm did. Wonderful interview with a very nice lady. Thank she you, was Chucky. a man, if you don't know who she was. Yeah. And then she played just my babe. What you popped up on my screen? You're interviewing Mark Marin, who I accidentally brought brought up earlier. It just popped up on my feed. Uh, no, you know what? It's uh, Jason Zinneman, who is the New York Times comedy critic, and he oh. just wrote an article about Mark Marin. But it's his article that we just forwarded. Yeah. Oh, okay. It would have been really weird if you were interviewing Mark after the conversation we had earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he wrote uh, Letterman, the last giant of late night. So um, that's it's it's a great interview. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. I never heard of the book, but yeah. It's I never one. heard of Letterman. Who's that? Huh? I never heard of David. Letterman who? Who is he? <laughs> He's the guy who thought you were going to like attack me. And yeah, I'm office. going to attack you in your office. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's Rick's bodyguard. Yeah. That was my you know, only. My you own. know, it's like 
again, and I'll have to email Chisholm, there's one person you don't want to reach out to, which I didn't know until a week ago. Really? Yeah. Well, Apparently, well, now you've got us you've got us all on edge here. Yeah. Oh, it's not a big deal, but just think who might not have been on Fallon last week or two weeks ago. Um, yeah, I mean, I I feel Is like I'm gonna talk to Sid. Yeah. Um, and 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 Al and I are going back and forth if you're talking about Al. Hey, we're doing a show. No, 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 people no, here. No, what, what is no, this? No, no. Sorry, guys. If you guys want a conference call later. Yeah. Get, Sorry, guys. Yeah. Break <laughs> get, room. get a room. <laughs> it's family day. It's so family know, day down there. Right? Zombies? Frankly, I like these, this person, but I heard some stuff about him and problems he had and whatever, you know. Was that somebody who didn't appear in the band on the Fallon show? Yes. Okay. All right. So, you know. Well, you know, again, whatever. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. anybody think Fallon is any good? No. And he's a nice person, by the way. I, is he really? I, told you I, I don't know. I've never had any interaction with him. But God, I watch him. He can't do a monologue. He 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 laughs too much at people, and then he plays password. And then he plays whatever. password with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can I can I be a Fallon? Uh, one thing that I really like that Fallon does is when he uh, impersonates people when he sings like Neil Young, like when he's Neil Young singing the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. That's really clever and funny. Mm -hmm. But I would say that's his most entertaining. All right, so that's his whole career on late night, huh? That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. Uh, yeah, but he also owns the Tonight Show, so therefore, you know, he's making good money. Does he own it, or does Lauren own it? Well, Lauren owns it, but you know, it's yeah. his show. Yeah, but I mean, Lauren owns. The, well, owns Lauren owns half of NBC. Let's yeah. face it, and you know. that—that's another career I don't understand. I mean, that when's the. Saturday Night Live. Just answer me yeah, a question. Five, Simple question. When was the last time Saturday Night Live was any good? When Steve Martin was just on it with uh, what's in his the nineties. Yes, yeah, before that, brilliant. Uh, two years before. Yeah, I mean, I it, you can name news. one show, but I'm talking about as a show that was. Oh, good. it sucks. It yeah, I just been. watch. Just watch the news. That's all. Yeah, I, I love when Chappelle's on there. Yeah, but you're talking about isolated good. circumstances. You're yes. not, I'm talking about when was this show ever watchable from week to week? You they know? say it was watchable from maybe, it was two, maybe or whatever. Paula? Yeah. It was watchable from then to, you know, there was just some stuff that really worked and wonderful talent and some stuff that didn't. And I think that goes all the way back, as far as I remember. Well, I think, you know, the original cast, I think, was pretty damn good. Amazing. You know, yeah, absolutely amazing. And um, um, I mean, I, frankly, I couldn't tell you a single person who is appearing on that show at the moment. Is it present time? No, there yeah. are several good people that come out of there. Yeah. But while oh, this, so there, I mean, the show is just it's somebody should put a bullet through its head. It's it's seen it today, you know. Yeah, but it makes money for NBC. If you know, that was the old Carson repeat slot. Back in '78 or whatever year that yeah. was, yeah. I will never not have SNL on my DVR because of the just in case factor. Like every once in a while, they're still hitting a home run, like a weekend update segment, or like when Chappelle's on or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I I totally hear where you're coming from. If you're uh, the, there's a I think Dana Carvey said this. You, the best. SNL cast is the one that you had in high school. And if you weren't in high school, if it was after, then it's the original cast. But so for me, it was Dana Carvey, Dennis Miller, Phil Hartman. Those were my, yeah, I love that era. They were very good. They were very good. And there was also a period where they had that all-star cast where it was like Billy Crystal, Martin Short, uh, Harry Shearer. Chris Guest. Mm -hmm. Chris Guest. I love yeah. Chris Guest there. Love okay. it. Yeah. yeah, that's like 83, maybe 84 yeah. or whatever. Chris Guest, by, by the way, another person who absolutely hates me. So <laughs> Really? Yeah. 
I, I, I got to hear this story. I'm a huge Chris Guest fan. I got to hear this. Me um, too. No, I just, I work with him on the <laughs> National Poon Radio Dinner, and he was a, he was a kind of a dick to me, you know. And um, then years <laughs> later, cut to San Francisco. Francisco. I have the cast on from a little a little movie that was coming <laughs> out called Spinal Tap. And I had, um, I had, um, um, were they in character? No. Okay. No. But I had a bunch of them on there. And one of them, of course, who came into the studio was Chris Guest. And he didn't want to come on because he remembered me from the wow. National Lampoon Radio dinner. So, you know, <laughs> he didn't even have, give, give me, give us the chance to make up with each other. You know, he was just a dick. Yeah. You know? Oh my God. Yeah. I love this story. Yeah. Wasn't that I, the, kind of his persona anyway? What, who, Chris Guest? Uh-huh. No. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what his reputation is. I mean, I have to admit it. I don't like the guy, but he became a very good filmmaker. He's made some, oh, he great, made some great little films. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and ones which I will always go back to and watch. You know, the, I don't. you don't get tired of. And he was the six-fingered man in Princess Bride. Uh, was he? Oh, I, I didn't remember. That's a great movie. That's a wonderful movie. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, yeah, I, re- I remember specifically, he waited, stayed out in the lobby. He didn't want to come in. Yeah. So, but uh, well, it's, well, the rest of us had fun. So that was nice. But anyway, so, you know, I mean, uh, I have a whole list of people who hate me. I think that's a good, good thing. I should go through them someday. Uh, you know. Um, well, it means you had a good career. Uh, well, it, you know, there are a lot of people that like me, too. I mean, I don't want to no, I can't think of any, though. <laughs> Did, uh, I think you should, through the power of your influence, I think you should reach out to them all and invite them onto this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other words, do a new a new podcast called "People Who Hate Me." No, no, no! Just invite him here. Invite him here. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Do you think if I reached out to Dave and said I'm doing a show called "People Who Hate Me," you'd come on? There you go. Maybe that would. You know. It's a funny premise for a show. Yeah, <laughs> we can call it Alex and his acolytes. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I let's see. First, uh, I could have Mark Marin on it. Yeah. Uh, I could have uh, a. a Dave. <laughs> I could have. Um, uh, Is Danielle Steele alive? She'll come on. Oh, Danielle Steele, man, she, <laughs> she, oh, she hated my guts. Didn't you have a thing with Dennis Miller? No. Oh, no, a, no. Bill no. Maher. We could say yes. And I never. Uh, no, Bill, Bill Maher. Bill Maher. Oh, Bill what Maher. a what a dick! What a dick! <laughs> Let me tell you a quick story. So his, new, his new podcast is well, stupid. We're getting we're, drunk well, with you a buddy. know why it's stupid? Because he's stoned all the time on it, and he thinks he's yeah. funny. But anyway, what happened was is that I uh, I was doing, I was doing these uh, HBO one night stands in San Francisco, and they hired me to host, them, but not host the show, host the warm up. Okay, so I I, I did the warm up and. What happens is every night, if you do it, eventually you've got an act by the end of the week, you know, and part of the warm up is you have everybody applaud. So you get a little bit of applauding and you get some laughing and some tracks you can use if they have to tie things together, whatever. Anyway, so I had this little thing I did and, and now it was Bill Maher's turn to be the show right that night. He and one other act, cause we, we did it twice. They did, uh, um, they would do one, then they would do the other, then they would do the one they did second first, so they didn't have to change the set, and then they would do the 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 first one again. And uh, I I I get called to Bill Maher's uh, dressing room. He says Bill Maher would like to see you in his dressing room, and so I uh, I go up. You were summoned. <laughs> I was summoned. So I went up, and he said hi. He says I'm Bill Maher. He says. Uh, I'm doing the show, as you know, tonight. He says, um, you do the warm up, right? And I said, right. He said, um, do you uh, do do you do any political stuff? And I said, well, I do a little bit because I want to get the audience to react to stuff. So I say things about the president and hope they will either applaud or (laughs) boo or something, you know, whatever, to get some wild tracks. And he goes, well, don't do any politics. I do politics. (laughs) 
I go, what? He said, don't do any political. I said, listen, you're making $20,000 to do this show tonight. I'm making 350. Follow me, motherfucker. And I walked out. I mean, you know, come on. How, how cheap is that? How, you know, niggly. That's a great story. Huh? <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. Follow me, motherfucker. You know, I mean, come on. You're making $20,000. I mean, it was a lot, a lot of money in those days. Oh, yeah. I'm making 350. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually they, they flew, flew me down to Hollywood to be the announcer on the show. So if you watch any one of the first year of, if you watch the Bill Maher special, that's me announcing the beginning of the show. So, and hey. who was it? Then he didn't he make fun of you after you you got the the crowd warmed up and then went over and started talking about you. Oh no, that was that was Goldthwait. That was oh. Goldthwait. Who was he on the list too? Well, well, I did. No, I did. I I did his uh, his show. I think did I announce his show or I warmed up his show? Warmed up, I think, yeah, yeah. And um, he, uh, you know, I see him before the show. And we, show, hey, I haven't seen him in a long time, Bob. We're really close. I mean, I think I had a lot to do with his career. Right. I can't lay claim for having much to do with anybody's career, but his, eh, you know, he he could say nice things about me. Um, we shake hands and everything, and I said, "Have a good, have a good show." So then he goes on, and the first five minutes of his act is him putting me down, <laughs> and and you uh, know, people in the audience are going, "What the fuck is going on here?" I mean, he's putting me down, and blah blah blah. This Alex Bennett, that blah blah blah, and I'm going, "Why in the world did he feel even compelled to waste his hour, or at least a half hour, five minutes of it?" on me and eventually they cut it out of the show oh, and i shit. never could figure out why he did it i went it was one of those cases where you go what did i ever do to him you know i did nothing but help his career that's all i cared about you know so nah. alex hey. before i know we're a little over but uh, uh that list do you put howard stern on that list because you know no i don't put howard on that list. i don't put howard on that list no howard doesn't hate me Howard, well, that incident was very cool. Anytime cool privately, back said, back. Any, anything he's had to say about me has always been very nice. Very. But positive. the invasion show was really cool. It'd be cool to revisit that. Is where I'm. Oh, coming you mean from. when he came, when he came into my show? That was a great show. Well, the, no, the best part about it was is that I said something about one of his people. I can't remember who the guy was, uh, but he was uh, he was he went to the uh, uh, who was the guy who pulled his sent pictures of his dick to everybody a wiener. <laughs> How can I forget that name? Okay, <laughs> Wiener, and and um, uh, they sent uh, this guy to his press press conference to then spoof him and you know give him a bad time and whatever Howard has his guys do, and I just said I thought it was terrible they did it. This guy was down already. You didn't have to kick him further into the ground. You know, it is the point at which you just go, eh. You know, well he got mad that I was putting down his guy, so he starts putting me down on his show. <laughs> Only because he's heard I've been talking about it. And uh, then I somebody comes in and says, uh, Howard wants you to come on his show. I said, well, I'm doing my show here. He's doing his show there. This I is said, all on YouTube, everybody. Just so you're yeah, aware, this yeah. is all on YouTube. Yeah, so I said something, and I guess I'm the first guy who could ever make Howard do this. I said, if Howard wants to talk to me, he can come here. So he picked up his whole studio, cameras and everything, and came down to my studio. And he walks into the studio, and he's ready to just, you know, do what Howard does, right? And I shook, put my hand out, shook his hand and said, great to meet you, Howard. Now he has his thing with me, and we, we get along pretty well, actually. And he goes back to his studio and and uh, Robin says to him, supposedly, because I didn't hear any of this going on, you were so nice to him. He said, well, I walked in. He put his hand out. He said, hi, Howard. Good to meet you. What am I going to do after that? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that was uh, that was the story of me and Howard, you know. And I was, by the way, the only guy, one of only two guys that Howard ever went on other shows on Sirius XM that Howard went on. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. 
It was, it was, it was fun. Hey, listen, it's five after what? Yeah. Let's go on for days now. Why don't we? Sure. No, I need to, I need to, I need my rest now. <laughs> um, What's for yeah. dinner, Marjorie? <laughs> chili. Yeah, chili. Not her Costco's chili. chili. Costco's chili. Hmm. The best. Which is pretty good, isn't it? Oh, they have pretty, they have great chili. Yeah. They have great chili. Yeah. Certain things I stopped making because. <laughs> no, everything you stop making because you send out for it, but. You know, Costco is also like one of the more on the, than I'll <laughs> get, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, Shecky, good seeing you. Good. Charlene, you haven't said a word throughout the whole show. I'm just listening and enjoying. I'm so interested in Shecky. He's so, I wish you'd just interview him. Yeah. Someday. He's no. tried. No. I've tried. You know, that's that's in my show, life. That's kind of redundant. Him, but I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's uh, you know it's kind of redundant because I talk to him once a week, so I pretty much interview him once a week. You know? <laughs> yeah, and you'll do that in about five minutes. My five minutes. As soon as I'm through here, I call him. <laughs> you know, make sure he. And then we talk about how much we like all of you people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brian, thank you so much. Nice shirt. Uh, and also Len LaFrisco, near San Francisco. <laughs> yep. And uh, Charlie Wallace, good to see you again, Charlie. Paula, always nice to have you here. Marjorie, glad you could show up. Uh, you didn't have to go far. Uh, Vernon, thank you. Thank you to uh, Jeff, who hasn't said anything today at all either. <laughs> Not a word. See, well, there uh, we got two words, uh, three words, not a word. Yeah, three words out of them. And finally, uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, nice to Love see you guys. Terminator came by. Yeah. And uh, finally, Edward Berger, who's going to sign us all off with the immortal words. That's all, folks. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. Give me a goodbye.